Today we had some of our rock iguanas hatch out. I actually had to save some from drowning inside of their eggs. Oh my gosh, guys. Little tiny baby Cuban rock iguanas. Let's go. Let's see what he's going to do. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. This egg is feeling really hard. Like The lizard may have drowned in here. So we're just going to gently take this razor blade and cut this open just like this. I think there's a stillborn iguana inside. I My worst fear has come true. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are having just an absolutely amazing day. Now, I just got wrapped up with today's video, and... It's definitely an emotional one. Today we had some of our rock iguanas hatch out. I actually had to save some from drowning inside of their eggs. And well, there's some sad news that happened. If you guys want to hear the sad news, if you want to see the sad news, well, you're going to have to stick along for today's video where we helped baby iguanas hatch out of their eggs. So that is pretty much what today's video is, helping iguanas hatch out of eggs. So without further ado, let's hop into today's video. What is up, everyone? I am back from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm back at my house now, and I just walked into the door. And of course, the first thing that I have to do whenever I come home from a trip, and I'm expecting baby animals as well, I've got to check the incubator to see if our iguanas hatch. We are expecting Cuban rock iguanas and Lewisai hybrid iguanas to hatch. So I have not opened the incubator yet. I don't know if anything's hatched yet. In theory, they should have hatched, but we're going to find out. Right now, we've got our incubator. Right here, we've got this little one. We're gonna open this, we're gonna go one and two. And we're in here right now. We're gonna look at this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yep, yep, we got our first one. We've got a little baby Cuban rock iguana that has hatched out of the egg. Look at this little gorgeous little guy. A gorgeous Cuban rock iguana inside of the tub. Now, this little guy is ready to come out of the tub. He's absorbed his yolk sac. But the thing is, is we cannot open this tub in here. He is an absolute lightning bolt, as you can see. If we open the tub in here, he's going to go bolting on out. So we are definitely not going to open that tub right there. We're just going to place this little tub aside right there. And, well, we've got to check the other tubs. We've got this tub right here. We're going to slide this one out. This is Cuban rock iguanas that were laid on June the 9th. And, oh my gosh, guys. Yes, this is amazing. We have baby dinosaurs, little tiny baby Cuban rock iguanas. Now, this is real life Jurassic Park here in my own room. This is in my own house, Jurassic Park. We're just going to move this moss just ever so slightly. So, how do these guys hatch? A lot of people always ask me, how do these iguanas hatch? Well, at the very, very tip of his nose, he has something called an egg tooth. When he's about to hatch, the egg is going to dent some, and he's going to start moving his little head around inside of the egg. That little sharp egg tooth on the tip of his nose is going to help put the little slices in the eggs. Now, these guys probably have another day or so. These guys are so, so cute. And now, if you guys want to see when these eggs were born, it was actually insane how we rescued these eggs. They, my iguana actually dug out of the cage and dug an underground cave in my backyard under a concrete slab. If you guys want to see when these eggs were hatched and how we extracted them, that video is linked right there above you. If you guys have not seen that yet, well, go watch that one and then watch this video right here because these iguanas right here are just getting ready to hatch. And honestly, guys, with these iguanas, we should be able to pick this up without them coming out because they're still, they're still quite sleepy. I mean, look at this gorgeous little Cuban rock iguana. Absolutely amazing having these little dinosaurs here in my house. So with these little guys right here, well, we're going to just place them back in here. We're going to put them back in the incubator. And well, we've got to get this guy set up, but we also have got to check our Lewisai hybrids. And now we're taking out our Lewisai hybrids. It looks like we've got a couple of them that have hatched out. And yes, we have two gorgeous Lewisai hybrids that came from the parents. Zeno and Xena, these, these have hatched out. We've got two of them there. Now, this is such great news that, you know, we're having iguanas hatch out and perfect timing for me to be back home for it all. So we've got some iguanas hatching out and well, we're gonna go get some bins in the garage so we can put our freshly hatched iguanas in them. We've got Cuban rock iguana number one, the first one to emerge out of the egg. Now, when I take animals out of the incubator, I put them inside of a bin so, you know, they don't run off and get stuck up underneath a shelf. So we're gonna open this right now in three, two, one. Let's go, let's see what he's gonna do. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah, see, you guys see what I mean? If we would've let him out here, he would've bolted off. Come here, little guys. Now, right now, we actually have to keep the Cubans and the Lewisai hybrids separate. Now, the reason being is at this age, they look fairly similar. And while we don't want to get one confused, we don't want them to get mixed up because that would just not be good at all. But you guys can see right here just how gorgeous this baby iguana is. Now, 
they have this a lot of striped and speckled patterning. And the reason being is in the wild at this age, they're quite vulnerable to a number of things eating them and killing them. One of the worst things that'll kill these guys is feral cats, but also storms, floods, and all kinds of other crazy stuff. But you can see he's like pretty much completely absorbed his yolk sac. This is one gorgeous little Cuban rock iguana. So we're just gonna take this little guy here. We're gonna let him live inside of there for now, just until he's completely healed up. You're good in there, buddy. I'm glad you're good. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this crazy little dude. Then we have the eggs. This right here is what he developed inside of. So yes, that whole lizard just a couple of days ago was living inside of here all curled up into an egg. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing to think that that big lizard that's about 13, 14 inches could fit in an egg just this big. Now that we have the little Cuban iguana inside of this bin, I'm going to have to go and find another bin so we can put the Lewis Eye hybrids in that one. Here's the bin in here are the Lewis Eye hybrids. Now it's a little bit cloudy in there. It's a little bit fogged up. So we're going to open it now in three, two, one. There we go. We've got the two Lewis Eye hybrids out. We're just going to close this on up and we're going to take this back inside. We need to get this back in the incubator ASAP because we don't want the temperature to get too cool. Now, I know it's a little bit hard to see in here because the bin is black, but come here, little guy. Come here. We have some little fat Lewis Eye hybrids hatching on out. So these guys are a little bit darker right now because they just came out. Now, you see that big old dangly thing right there? You know, this might be an infected umbilical, you know, just because that will happen. Sometimes their stomachs will bloat. But, you know, in just a couple of days, that will completely heal up. It'll absorb that nutrients. Now, the reason why they have this big yolk sac is because that is what gives them their nutrition for about the first week of their life. So when they hatch out, they can run around and be free little lizards without having to worry about food. And here are two babies from two different clutches. This one right here is the Lewis Psi Hybrid, and this is the Cuban Rock Iguana. Now this one appears to be a lot darker because it just came out of the egg probably a couple of hours ago because of that right there. You can see his yolk sac, but look at the patterns. You can see the difference between the Lewis Psi and the Cubans. The Cuban has a lot more banding, whereas the Lewis Psi has a little bit more space out banding, the Lewis Eye is found on the island of Grand Cayman, whereas the Cuban is found on the island of Cuba. You can see just how similar they are. So what we have got to do now is, well, I'm tired. I've been on a flight all day. We've got the babies out that needed to get out. So we're going to put the Cuban back in his bin. We're going to put the Lewis Eye back in his. And well, I will see all of you guys tomorrow morning when we wake up and we check the incubator to see if there is more lizards hatching the next day. Good morning, good morning, my beautiful people. It is obviously the morning time, and well, what does that mean? That means it is time to go and check the incubator. The latches are open, and well, it is time to check and see what we're working with. Oh, it looks like we've got another, oh, look, I didn't even notice him. Look, there's another Cuban iguana right inside of here that has hatched out. We're gonna poop this little guy out right here. We're gonna take this little tub right inside of the garage. We're gonna open the door on up. We got our knee opening up. And we're going to put this Cuban iguana in here with his brother or sister. Well, I'm not sure what they are yet. Now, last night, none of these had come out of the egg yet, but now we have at least one. There might be a second. Oh, my gosh. I was wrong. There's a third. Look at that right there. Oh, my gosh. Here, here, buddy. Let me give you a little hand. Let me give you a little assistance right there. Look how beautiful these Cuban rock iguanas are. Gorgeous little babies. This guy is got a fat old belly full of yolk sac. Hi there, little guy. Now, it is absolutely amazing to pretty much have Jurassic Park in my own house. It's really cool to see, so we're just going to snap this on shut just like that. We're going to give these guys some room. We're just going to lift on up. How crazy is it that an iguana like this, that's probably about 12 to 14 inches, this little guy was just inside of this egg right here. I mean, look at the size difference when you really see it. I mean, nature is absolutely amazing. It never ceases to amaze me. So now that we've got the rest of the Cuban iguanas that are going to hatch out for today, now we've got to go and check the Lewis Eye hybrids. And we have another Lewis Eye hybrid that has come out. So we're just going to pop this on open just like that. We got our little Lewis Eye hybrid right there. Look at this little dude right here. I mean, you can almost see the blue bands already. And you can see this one's got some interesting stripes. Wow. What an interesting pattern on this one. The banding kind of just fades out. So cool. Now, before we put the Cubans back in the incubator, I want to show you this. I was feeling around and this egg is feeling really hard, like, like the lizard may have drowned in here. So I'm going to have to, you know, slice this egg open with a razor blade just in case the lizard is still maybe half alive, but, but it really doesn't feel like it's alive in here. So I'm just going to take this right here just like this, and I'm just going to cut open the egg. It's not... It's not looking too good right now. I mean, I'm not feeling any movement, and with all these lizards just hatching, there should be some sort of movement in here, but I'm not sure, guys. 
So we're just gonna gently take this razor blade and cut this open just like this. And we're just gonna do a, just a slight slice as you guys can see. And I'm just gonna peek on in. <gasps> I'm peeling this open and I think there's a stillborn iguana inside. I think for some reason it, it died in the egg. This is not good at all. Oh no. My worst fear has come true. It looks as if we have a stillborn baby iguana in here. We're just gonna peel the egg open because he, he's not moving. This is definitely a, a stillborn iguana. Having stuff like this happen, I mean, this is all a part of owning animals. This is a part of breeding them. You know, sometimes you have animals that are stillborn that don't make it. I'm not sure why he could have drowned in the egg. He could have just not been viable. I'm not sure, but guys, Make sure to go comment down below a little prayer for this little Cuban iguana because my, my worst fear came true that, that we were going to have some stillborn iguanas. So what I'm going to do now is, well, I'm going to remove him from the egg. I'm probably going to put him in some sort of a jar, but we're just going to kind of just move him out of the egg. He's all intertwined inside of the egg. He's even got some eggs stuck to him. But as you guys can see, he is just totally stillborn. Now again, this right here is the yolk sac. He would have absorbed this yolk sac right here. You can see that it's attached to his stomach. But man, I'm just so sad to see that this little iguana just didn't make it, that he was born stillborn. For some reason, I'm not entirely sure why such a thing happened. But again, there's nothing we can do but hope this doesn't happen again. We have got the other iguana put aside, and now I'm going to cut open this egg just so I can be sure that this one has not drowned too, you know. This would just not be good at all if we have two of them that drown, so we're just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put an ever so slight slice in the egg, and by doing this, we're going to alleviate some pressure in the egg, and we're going to allow for some oxygen. I believe there is one other iguana here that is stillborn. I mean, I'm touching him right now, and there is no movement whatsoever, so... You know, we just got to get to the head to confirm it, but I'm pretty much confirmed it myself, given that nothing else is moving on it. We're just going to cut them just a little bit there, and we're going to just peel open the egg so we can see if the iguana is stillborn, which obviously, you know, I can just tell right now that he is because there is no movement whatsoever. And let's see, we're just going to pull him. I'm sorry if this is a little bit much for some people, but this is a part of breeding reptiles. It will happen sometimes where, you know, we have some stillborn animals. We have yet another stillborn a Cuban rock iguana. Guys, we're going to be preserving both of these in jars. You know, even though they weren't able to live, I will still be able to educate people about them and show them in jars. But it really is sad, guys. So again, please go comment down below a little prayer for these poor stillborn iguanas. And that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you did enjoy watching today's video. You know, it was absolutely amazing to actually see these rock iguanas hatch out. And it's always amazing and so much fun for me to bring new life into this world. And it is very, very sad, you know, that we did have some of the iguanas that did not make it. But that is a part of owning and breeding animals. There are some things that are always going to be out of our control, like stillborn animals. There's nothing that I could have done to prevent it. But overall, it's just so, so sad to see. Make sure you guys go right now and comment down below what you thought of today's video. And guys, if you are not subscribed already, you enjoy the content, you want to see more iguanas, tortoises, turtles, tigers, monkeys, all kinds of crazy stuff, well, what are you waiting for? Go right now and hit that subscribe button and tap that little notification bell and you all will be notified whenever I post.